who actually reported this event is going to happen in the future. Before him, thousands of years before him, according to our narrations, uh, from Adam السلام, to Abraham, Noah, and the others, have been narrated that they have addressed this issue of uh, Karbala, event of Karbala and Ashura. And uh, this seems to have some roots uh, in the divine knowledge. Even after this event, like 30 years after, uh, when uh, actually uh, 60 years after this event, uh, uh, Imam Ali salam, when he is on the way, he's back from one of the battles, I believe it, it's the Battle of Sefin, uh, he is stopped at some location which is close uh, across the uh, desert of Karbala. And he prayed there, and he cried, and he uh, actually delivered a ceremony, a beautiful ceremony, which is now recorded in the uh, in the books. So, anybody talking about this event of Ashura? I know tonight is the joyous moment of uh, celebrating the birthday of Imam Hussein. I don't want to take you too much to deep into the Ashura event, which is not a happy event. But I have to address this, unfortunately, and please forgive my. Uh, the in here. The question is, what is the significance of this event? I believe when the Holy Prophet cries at this moment, it gives us some sort of direction of where to look for the answer to that question. What is the significance of Imam Hussein? You guys, please help me. I wanted to hear from you uh, what is your understanding and what is your reasoning behind the significance and importance of the, the role of Imam Hussein in the history. Why is it so important that this one is singled out amongst all the other Masum in the Infolgos? Tell me what you think. What is that makes uh, the event of Ashura and Imam Hussein السلام, so significant, so different from others? And why is that this type of narrations is kind of specific to him? Is anybody here who shares his knowledge with me? Why is it that Imam Hussein? Remember, we are told, and this is actually a true statement, I believe, that Imam Hussein ensured Islam. Imam Hussein is the one who safeguarded and guaranteed the survival of Islam and Quran. We can prove this in another discussion, inshallah. But tonight we wanted to see why is it that we believe in Imam Hussein and how did he really actually, with, with, without going too much to the supernatural things, just by rational, how can we explain and make sense out of this, that Imam Hussein was the one who guaranteed the survival of Islam and ensured uh, and safeguarded Islam. What is the significance of Imam Hussein? Anybody here who wants to share with me? Yes, please. Uh, it was basically a shock treatment to the Ummah, the, the Muslims, as the Prophet had uh, foreseen earlier, had fallen into uh, the wrong ways of, uh, of course, the second Khalifa and the third, and then, you know, from back to worse. It had gone to Muawiyah and then Yazid. So this was the last point where actually the turning tide, which had to be taken. It was at the point where either Islam would be gone forever and all the all that the Prophet had worked for and done would be washed away. Thank you so much. Uh, our brother, I, I repeat uh, part of what I understand from his statement is that this is a shocking moment or a shock wave that was created at the time of Ashura that uh, caused the uh, awakening of the nation and correcting their direction because it was going down south badly. This is, if I'm not, I'm not wrong, basically 
the, the, the significance of Ashura in my brother's statement is that it changed the course of the direction that everybody was going down because we have deviated from uh, the, the true uh, teaching of Holy Prophet at the time of demise of Holy Prophet and it just went down south and that the event of Ashura just a turning point and changed the, uh, the curvature toward a different direction. Is anybody else in here that has something else to add to this? Uh, because I'm not convinced, honestly. I'm not convinced. I will explain a little bit. I'm not convinced with this is a very classic way of uh, looking at Ashura and I'm uh, absolutely not convinced that this is the reason why Ashura is so significant and Muhammad is so significant. We should look a little bit more in depth and find better reasons or way of uh, understanding and explaining why is it so significant about uh, uh, Allah Ashura. Please, anybody else? Help me. The question again is why do we really believe that Imam Hussein is so significant and what is the specific about Imam Hussein that nobody else is entitled to that and nobody else is actually credited for that, basically. Yes. Okay. Let me start some... Yes, please, go ahead. He sacrificed himself for the, so he can take the nation of Islam. Great. The question is, did anybody else in the Imam sacrifice himself for the saving nation of Islam or not? Or is he the only one who sacrificed? Is the Imam Muslim the only one who sacrificed? Everybody else did sacrifice, right? So what is significant about Imam Muslim? So what is different? Anybody else? Help me. We wanted to think a little bit tonight. I'm sorry, it's not here just to to entertain you. It's a little bit uh, a torture of thinking about these important things. We are Shia, we are known to be the followers and lovers of Ahlul Bayt, and specifically Imam Hussein is, has a significance in Shia a school of thought. We need to be able to explain more and better about this phenomenon. Remember, the answer is in the action of Holy Prophet. The action was weeping. We will, inshallah, learn that this, this is the answer to this question. Somehow we will get to that point. Remember, we have to go back a little bit in the history to the day of appointment of Imam Ali uh, to be the successor of Holy Prophet. Please excuse me if I forget to say alayhi salam. You do it in your mind for me, please, if I forgot. Um, do you think that Holy Prophet Sallallahu and Imam Ali and the, the, the Holy um, Ahlul Bayt were in the impression and imagination and the belief that when, Imam, when, when Holy Prophet comes and appoints Imam Ali, to be his successor, these people are going to follow Imam Ali. Do you think that was the impression in their mind, or from the behavior? We have, you don't have, we don't want it to just guess. We wanted to look at the history from what we know, what Holy Prophet did prior to this event of Qadir. He had said so many things and had done so many things that very clearly, out loud, explains and describes and states that Holy Prophet knew for sure these people are not gonna follow the appointment of Ali in Qadir. That was very definite. I mean, the history is full of evidence. In the revelation of the Ya Ayyuhar Rasul Balder Ma'un Zala Alayka Man Rabbik Ba'illam Tath'at Ma Balder Tath'at Rasul Alayka Ba'illahu Ya'asul Kaman Al-Nas And so many other events It's very clear that Holy Prophet was not fooling himself He knew it How many people were, were present at the time of appointment of Ali alayhi salam in the Qadir? Anybody know here? 120,000 by many of the narrations 
that is not one or ten or hundred people, hundred twenty thousand, and the the sermon, the speech that the Holy Prophet delivered is known as to be the longest one ever he has ever done. Maybe two or three hours it took the speech about this event, and then the whole thing, according to many sources, uh, took about three days of. Pledge of allegiance to Holy Prophet first, and then to Imam Ali next. All of that for how many people? Hundred twenty thousand. And then how many of them, after the demise of Holy Prophet, were supporting Al Bayt? It is again noted in the history that Imam Ali Ali Salam and Fatima Zahra Salam Ali Han the kids were using even the the the. Uh, uh, Many, many uh, reminders and going door to door of the, uh, the Ashab and asking, do you remember what Holy Prophet said about what's going to happen after him and what he wants to, to be? And he could, they couldn't find any popular vote. So it was very clear to Holy Prophet, and this is not going to cut. But now, Holy Prophet has reached to the point that his demise is determined. He, he, he told it. He, he, he already, uh, about, a, he, about a year prior to his demise, he's already announced that this year, I know this is my last year. That's why we do this uh, hatch and all the things. This is, I don't want to uh, uh, arrive to that uh, part of the story. Everybody know, I mean, they know that these people are not going to, so, the demise is, is closed. Majority of the teaching of Islam is not still completed and it needs to be worked on. And then what is the, the, the way got out? Somebody has to be appointed to continue this way of teaching people from the real true understanding from Islam and Quran. So the flag was given by the order of Allah to Imam Ali. But everybody knew that this is not going to cut. So why, why is that not going to cut? Why is it the, the, the truth that we know these people are not going to follow the pledge of allegiance that they have already given to Imam Ali It's the absence of a nation. That is the missing link. Imam Ali is there. Holy Prophet is there. The order of Allah is there. Everything is there to make Ali the successor of the prophet. But there is one missing link, which is the, the most important, well, not the most important, but one of the, the, the major uh, ingredients of this, and that's the nation. There is no nation, there is no people, no ummah who can follow and understand and be qualified for that kind of leadership. Remember, the kind of leadership that Imam Ali and other Imams have to offer it requires a type of qualification for the followers. It's always a, a coordination between the followers and the leader, right? There is a narration say, say that says, "Am nasud be Umar ahin, ashrah min hum be People to their leaders are are more similar and resembling than their fathers. That's how close the leadership of any community and the people are. I and mean, if those people are, do not deserve that kind of leadership, that leadership doesn't sustain. Uh, this is a huge discussion, I don't want to enter it, but just have it in mind that there was no readiness in the people to follow that kind of leadership. So that was determined and definite that this leadership is not, the time is not come for that kind of leadership. So what is, what are we supposed to do? We need to wait. Here is when the concept of time come to play. The concept of Wal'as is directly attached to Imam Musa It's not accidental. There is a reason behind it. So the, the, the phenomena of time is required in order to to raise a nation, a group of people who are qualified for that kind of leadership which Ali is representative of that, or the Holy Prophet, or other Imams. 
how can we get that time? Remember, the time has to be agreeable time. Otherwise, it doesn't necessarily work for you. It may work against you. If the time is so that the event, the sequence of the events in that period of time does not get you any closer and closer gradually to that goal, that time is not good for you. It's actually like work against you. And you just forget everything after a period of time. You forget all, all about it. So we need a specific kind of time, a specific kind of sequence of events that gets you step by step closer and closer to the creation of that nation who is qualified for that kind of leadership. That's the only way that Khadir can come through. Now, the question is how can we keep these generations connected? What is the age of average age of any generation? Anybody here knows? How many years? No, not 60. 30. 30. Why is it 30? We, we, we usually live more than 30 years old. Why, why do they say correctly that the generations are 30 years? Because the kids. Because we overlap, right? We from the start that we, 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 we share some period of this time with our kids. So we are at about the age of 20 to 30 that we get our kids. So from that moment on, it's about 30 more years until that next generation becomes the fathers and we are done, we are gone, right? So, every generation is about 30 years on average. After this generation passes, you, 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 you convey some of your teachings or culture, your, you know, your value system to your next generation, right? And you have those who especially have raised kids in this country or, or they are migrate, uh, have migrated and have experienced this, this phenomenon is very clear to them that when you pass from one generation to the other generation, many of the things that the earlier generation had is not going to be conveyed to the second generation, to the next generation. Why? Because the time has changed. Lots of things have changed. Their, their desires have, have changed, their ambition has changed, everything has changed. So you cannot really convey 100% of what you have to the next generation. You can make them, if you are very lucky and very successful, you may be able to convey the value systems and the basics. It may compose of 10 to 20% of what you are as the cultural entity or animal to your next generation. So generation after generation, this dilutes. The things that your grand great grandfather did or believed or was about is hundred percent different from what you are now about. It's just four, three, five the generation. Everything has almost evolved. There are very, very minimum things, minimal things that is kept generation after generation. Bottom line is that we need a time that is agreeable, but this time has to work for that message. How can we connect these generations to each other? There are dynamisms and mechanisms. And the event of Ashura plays that role for the message of Qadir. So the message of Qadir, what was the message of Qadir? What was the essence of Qadir home? If you wanted to say in one sentence, what do you, how do you express the whole, if you want to encapsulate the whole, um, Qadir event in one sentence, what is the, the, the soul and the, the spirit of Qadir? The se avoiding the separation of Quran and Sunnah. That's the whole thing, right? If you don't separate these two, you are good. If you separate these two, you are in, in a bad shape, you are in trouble. That's the essence of message in Qadir. This message needs something to keep it alive for generation after generation until the time comes in which a generation, a, a generation or a, a nation is created which is qualified for that kind of leadership that was defeated at the time of Muhammad and the others. That is created by Ashura. The event of Ashura and specifically, particularly, I highlight this, weeping about Ashura, remembering, remembrance of Ashura and uh, re 
really do the same thing that you have done throughout the history. This is the essence of keeping the Shia nation alive. Shia is alive by the event of Ashura. The remembrance of Ashura is what kept this nation alive. And generation after generation, they conveyed the message. Until hopefully someday, there is a group of Shia in this world who is qualified for the leadership of Amaroni type. That is the time of what? Ahsan. That's the time of the appearance of our Imam. The Imam is not going to reappear until there is a minimum number of qualified followers who are in the same arena and in the same shape and quality that it was supposed to be. And that takes God knows how many years to create that nation. So whoever wants to adore or celebrate Imam Hussein has to remember you have to be a good follower in a way to create a nation, a society, a social body. It's not just individuals, that doesn't help. If you have thousands of thousands of individuals that are scattered all around the world, and they are good people, they are mutari, they are pious, they are the best, they do all the namaz, all the ruze, all the nawafel, everything. But they are not forming a society, a community. They are not coordinating. They are not creating a body, a social body. This doesn't cut. This doesn't cut. Shia followers and lovers of Abu Bid have to learn. They have to create, in their own extent, their own community. And this community is the only vehicle in which people really grow, morally grow, from the value perspective they grow. That's the only way that you can attain a quality that leads you to be the follower and the helper of Imam Mahdi, then he, he reappears. Without that, the Ashura is not, it's going to continue. The Ashura is going to continue its function. People, generation after generation, year after year, day after day, they remember and they weep. They remember and they cry. They remember and they laminate. They remember and they mourn for Ashura until, because that is the only vehicle that keeps the generation together and conveys that message, the message of Adil, until the day comes in which the nation, a small nation, a society, is created in which that society represents the morality of a real true moment from his individual quality and more importantly knows how to deal with his co with his neighbors, with his friends, with the brothers that is more important than the first one and you have to have the first one in order to become capable of doing the second one but the second one is the, the secret that is what we lack we don't lack of good people Remember, 313 believer, true believer, I guarantee I can find you in the history more than a thousand of them. This didn't materialize the reappearance of Imam Mahdi. Because there was no society, there was no social body. You need a social body, community. I cannot stress enough on this. You have to learn how to work together. You have to learn how the leadership works. You have to learn how to appoint the leader and how to follow and how to help him and how to correct him. You, have, if you are a leadership in the position of leadership, you have to learn how to treat your followers. These are the secrets, the last secrets of this whole uh, story. Before we attain those qualities, we just have to continue crying for us until some generation capable of doing this comes to the play and they do, do the right thing and I hope this answers you why the crying of Holy Prophet at the time of birth answers this question of what is the significance of about the law. Don't tell me about the law sacrifice because everybody has sacrificed. 
John, tell me, do you really believe that Yazid was the worst? Who can hear there to prove and announce that Yazid was the worst of the worst in the history of Islam? Who can dare do that? I challenge you. I can prove to you with the history of written by our Sunni brothers that Muawiyah was uh, tens of times worse than Yazid to Islam. And this very Imam Hussein didn't fight with Muawiyah for 10 years. Yazid was not the worst person, it was the best opportunity. That's it. He was only the best opportunity, a short period of time, that was the only opportunity that was given to Alabi. That was it. That was why Imam Hussein didn't do the same thing with Muawiyah. Even though he's, he wrote to Muawiyah, if there is one person in the whole world that I love to fight, it's you. If it is, it was, I was supposed to fight with somebody, that was you. Don't tell me that, yes, it was the worst. That's why Imam Hussein upraised, and the others were good. No, don't tell me after the, the event of Ashura, people got a better correction. It's no way that you can prove this. Bani Umayyad was very bad. But Bani Marwan who came after Bani Umayyad was even worse. And the Bani Abbas was worse than the other two. Nothing really went to the better direction at all, whatsoever. So, this is not why Ashura is important, that because it corrected the government, make them 10% better. No, it didn't make it. As a matter of fact, for two more years after the event of Ashura, two big events happened, that was Baqai Harre and the, the, the attack to uh, the Beitul Lal Haram and the others, that was some of the worst things that happened after Ashura. They didn't learn any lesson from Ashura. After that, Bani Abbas was much worse than Bani Umayyad. Until the Bani Abbas came to power, they were worse even than the Antwerp. So nothing really got better, and that is not the significance of Ashur. Don't fool yourself. Try to find what is the solution to your today's problems from Ashur. We have to be able to find the answer to our today question by learning what the Ashur was all about, and what Imam Hussein was all about, and what is the significance of Imam Hussein. I thank you so much for uh, allowing me to share my thoughts with you and helping with these few minutes. May Allah help us to follow, understand, and to get qualified to be a follower of Ahlul Bayt. Alayhi wassalam. Ben Nabi Allah Salabat. شان <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not